I'm skipping over Rebirth of Mothra 3 for a reason. I've got something special planned for it later on. But for now, let's move on to Godzilla 2000. Ooh, so futuristic. But more like a blast from the past. Yeah, I remember so much anticipating the day that I would go see Godzilla 2000 in the theaters. Oh yeah, not since Godzilla 1985 has a Toho Godzilla movie been released in American theaters, and not again until Shin Godzilla in 2016. I am offended. There should have been more of these films, because in my mind at the time, the Godzilla 1998 film was a travesty. I kept telling everyone, that's not the real Godzilla. You have to see what he's supposed to be. You have to. But of course, the few who knew about the Toho Godzilla associated him with the ridiculous, poorly produced films of the late 60s and early 70s. Well, here we go. Godzilla 2000 was finally my exhibit A. Now American audiences could see what Godzilla is supposed to be like. Toho even gave the Big G an updated badass look, while still looking like Godzilla, and not like an iguana. As for my theater experience, honestly, I can't really recall any of it, other than that I went on a school night. Ooh, so daring! I've never seen Godzilla this close before. Yeah, now that's a favorite moment. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Also, the special effects really stick out. While the practical effects are once again fantastic, this was the early stages of CGI, and some of it looks quite bad. And once again, there is an overzealous abundance of bizarre green screening and composite shots, to the point where it's hysterical. However, one thing that is stickworthy is Godzilla's opponent, yeah! Whenever there's a reboot of the franchise, Godzilla's usually alone, but not with this one. So it came as an awesome surprise! I don't think it's given a name in the movie, but today this alien is labeled as Orga, and he's pretty cool looking, you gotta admit it, oh yeah! The final fight between him and the Big G is fantastic. Ooh, right in the face! There's a lot of great moments and kick-ass practical effects. But hold on to your butts, Godzilla not only fights Orga, no, but the spaceship itself! And it nearly obliterates him multiple times! It's so cool! And at one point, it becomes a two-on-one! Ooh, that's one thing that Godzilla 2000 excels at. The final fight is not boring. Now, Orga's an alien from outer space. Nothing out of the ordinary. Well, I say that lightly. But back then, I didn't think anything of it. Aliens are a staple of the Godzilla franchise. Godzilla fights aliens all the time. Though, watching it again and knowing the history behind Toho and TriStar, I can't help but think Toho's making fun of director Roland Emmerich, particularly Independence Day, as if Toho was more insulting than I was about Godzilla 1998. So we're gonna do the same to you? <laughs> the alien really reminds me of the Independence Day aliens, particularly the shape of the head and those elongated hands and fingers, yuck. And even the tentacles that come out and suck Godzilla's DNA. Yummy. Ooh, and look, Tristar's greedily gobbling up Godzilla. Oh, it thinks he can copy and be Godzilla. But uh-oh. <laughs> Tristar tried to fight more than he could chew. The same day I saw Godzilla 2000, I was learning about Darwinian theory. Heavy stuff for a fifth grader. Well, who thought that ever come back again? because there's nothing more satisfying and serviceable than killing away an error and establishing a truth. Well, we naturally select this Godzilla as the truth! Survival of the fittest, Godzilla lives on! Amen. 